listening to a special episode of Neo Cash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. In this special episode, I'm interviewing Maxim Balashevich, the founder of Sentiment, billing itself as the Bloomberg of crypto. Sentiment is looking to offer crypto traders the same sort of cutting-edge data feeds that traditional hedge funds and stock brokerages enjoy. Maxim, welcome to the show. Welcome, JJ. Welcome. Well, uh, let's start off with just ha- having you tell the listeners a little about yourself, and then we'll get into sentiment. Um, from my background, from my background, it's like coming from different uh, uh, angles. One uh, part of my life I did spend as a software developer, uh, being like working for IBM and leading the project there, and then also building a hosting company and was like more like entrepreneur and a product manager so i'm connected to it for over 20 years already then on the second part I, i've been involved for more than 10 years in uh, market analysis um, and it was mostly focused on elliot waves and uh, crowd sentiment crowd psychology um, maybe it's because my interest in all this uh, psychology stuff. I also practice in yoga and meditation. So for me, it's a kind of natural to understand the flow of uh, uh, emotion in a person and also on the bigger circles when people are involved into investment and trading. So everything combined, when I exposed to, uh, when I was exposed to crypto market, well, I just saw, well, it's amazing, amazing things happening, amazing possibilities to bring a next level of how we communicate humans between each other how we do transactions and of course the crypto market itself it's just in, um, condensed intensive emotion every day so right. apply, apply applying this crowd sentiment and uh, elliot waves i was quite successful with a uh, set of predictions especially one of the most <laughs> well famous in our circle at the beginning of the year when i say yeah it will grow substantially and ethereum will outperform bitcoin which most people did not like at the beginning of the year, but then they appreciate it. And all based on Elliott Waves and crowd sentiment because it was uh, I was doing it for one year and I already got quite good touch of what's going on in the market. Now, uh, I was processing, I'm still processing huge amount of information daily. Yeah? And okay. uh, I kind of know what is important for me. And at some point of time, uh, we uh, get a group of people which become bigger and bigger, and this is how everything turned to sentiment. But maybe it's like we will come into details uh, as we proceed. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so, okay, so now I mentioned sentiment, a brief uh, data feed description of it, but but give me a, a more thorough description of what sentiment is and what it's going to be. Mm, many layers. Like, imagine on, on one very basic, very basic layer, uh, we have uh, around 900 uh, cryptocurrencies or cryptocurrency project, let's say, yeah, because cryptocurrency sure. itself is not so many. And it's like exponentially growing. We have ICOs every day, every day, I don't know, lately, like more than one every day. So it's a, as a, our crypto universe is like expanding and every project gives something specific and you cannot follow it anymore. And sometimes you don't know anything about the project, but then it appears in your horizon, you know, oh, what is this? What is it behind? What is the technology? What is the crypto economy? Who is behind it? You, you need data for it. So you go where? Well, now we have a kind of a coin market cup or uh, some other sources. And actually, you don't, don't, don't get so much. You have some very, very surface or very basic layer of information. And there is a demand for more. So this is one what we offer. And it will be mostly like for free. So whenever you want to know something about the project, you will find it uh, in, in our platform. And it will give you much deeper insight. We we'll also extract data from blockchain, from corresponding blockchain. And we connect some social profiles, like a lot of things which uh, does belong to something like Bloomberg is doing, but it's not existing yet. So one layer of information, yeah? Basic layer for uh, uh, deep information for every project. Now, there is a second uh, part. When you are active investor or the trader, you want to be informed when something does happen. And uh, if you are following the crypto market in general, it's one thing. You have a set of quite good resources everywhere. But if you're following a set of specific projects, you either need to be in the Slack or you need to know the founders, <laughs> this is the best. Right. Uh, but you, you need some trustful source information, like uh, what we call data feeds. So what's going on? Uh, what is happening? Uh, and uh, there are a lot of different data feeds. You, one of them 
classically existing in Bloomberg, not yet in crypto, like cash flows reports. Yeah, how how is they how is they doing with the money they collected? What is the uh, uh, um, the financial uh, discipline yeah? or let's say uh, token distribution it's amazingly a uh, set of data every project has token distribution and it's there on a blockchain but uh, to get it out to structure package and visualize it for those who are interested in a way that you can see some connections or you connect the dots this is a thing also we are doing so it doesn't exist and it's a different data flow. When the, for instance, big shift in data holder structure or in token holder structure happens, when the big holders like whales suddenly starts dumping or moving their funds to the exchange, yeah, you, I think right. it, yep. you, you need to know it when suddenly 5% of tokens hit exchange and say, oh, something's going on. <laughs> I, don't yeah. want to, I don't want to be the last one who will dump. Yeah? And this is already not, not free anymore. So for this service, uh, if you want to have it, you will have to pay. And uh, then, well, my specific like crowd sentiment, what are people are talking and feeling about the project? Is it uh, now in the bottom where they're depressed, they want to run away, panic? And you say, oh, wait a second, let me check the fundamentals. Are they really so bad? Mm, they don't seem so bad. Uh, maybe it's a time to buy. Yeah? And then, like, we have it regularly, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, like, already this year a few times, hit the top. And everyone is excited and think, oh, next target for Ethereum, 1,000 or for bitcoin we have no competitors anymore like for sentiment point of view we'll see oh it does look like a hype again so maybe i should right. reduce my position so there's another data data feed yeah so now you see right. like set of data feeds which if you are really involved in this highly competitive uh, competitive space where you need to actively manage what you are doing uh, you would likely pay for the services right so before I started the show, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the research, I actually went and I, I looked up the Bloomberg terminals and yeah. I got a sort of idea of what they are so that I could understand them. And they are some complex, multi-layered, just insane amount of data. Yes. Um, and it, so if, if the listeners out there aren't familiar with the Bloomberg terminals, it's basically, what, what was it, $20,000 a year per person yes. just in order to, to view them? Yeah, just to, then, yeah, to have the terminal, yeah. Right, and then I think there's there's additional levels beyond that, but um, I, I'm not certain about any of that, but it's it's like there's there's a, it seems like the information that you're presented with the Bloomberg terminals is is comprehensive. I mean, it's it's every angle you could come at from, from tracking some of these businesses. And of course, you know, that's, it follows that it, there's millions upon billions of dollars that that moves through the the, the stock markets based right. on some of the information in these terminals. Right. I mean, I mean, what's your experience? Have you? I mean, the Bloomberg terminal is, seems like a very uh, like audacious um, accomplishment to to try to 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 come at. Um, let's let's uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, Go ahead. Just talk about that for a minute. Just talk yeah, about the Bloomberg yeah, terminal yeah, and how, yeah. how you're going to get to that point. Yes, yes. Well, well first, uh, Rome is not built on one day. And right, Bloomberg right. terminal, all I, I wasn't there when it was established. Uh, but I suppose it was also a limited set of very dedicated information which some customers of uh, Bloomberg required. And this is exactly where we're starting now. Uh, I have an expertise in crowd sentiment and we are going to deliver this. And uh, we, uh, with the help of community, we're building a set of information for crypto project. And basically that's it. And then some set of uh, mm, data feeds or signals uh, which come out of the noise, say something's going on. Mm -hmm. And right, uh, right. for the beginning, that's it. And uh, as the crypto market matures, and we, as I believe we will do it this step, at some point of time, um, not replace, but maybe like live in a parallel universe, uh, our set of crypto tokens or token economy is established. Now there will be demand for additional set of data, either updated regularly, right. like weekly, monthly, or like on a flow of data, because blockchain is like living organism. And Based on this demand, we will most likely have to extract 
specific set of data while we're extracting it anyway, like uh, uh, package and deliver it to the users in the way they require it. Right. And this is where challenge will come not to make the system too complicated. And uh, yeah, well, this clearly will be a challenge. For the moment, it doesn't seem to complicate to me. You have overview of project, you have a detailed uh, view of every project, and you have summary of the market. Yeah, and I can imagine how we uh, distinguish your uh, screen or even a mobile where you have set of okay, this is what a crowd sentiment is happening, and this is kind of flow of fundamental information or extraction of blockchain. It's three, four screens. You can structure it. Um, if we <laughs> will be able uh, to keep that simple or will fall into category of what Bloomberg had to do uh, to fulfill everyone's wishes or also to compete with others, question to be answered I don't know, in two years. Right now, right. we can keep it simple. Yeah. So now the, the the Bloomberg terminal too. For those that have not seen it or or have heard of it, it's it's looks like DOS. It's it's very mm -hmm. much text driven. There aren't any images. There's no graphics. It's really just colored text, and um, various colors denote different things. And there are certain colors of text that you can change, and then there are certain colors of text that are just um, various information pieces. Are you are you going to follow that same sort of simplified uh, view, or are you going to uh, change that up? Uh, so say in German, "Jein" it means yes and no. <laughs> um, it is uh, by no means has to be so dos oriented and primitive. It will definitely be more visual. Okay. Y yet. Um, well, I think I will introduce a little bit more how we are planning to build the whole platform. There is a um, different set of users of uh, uh, data we are collecting. Uh, one, mm, we are given a set of, how we call it, raw data, which is not much processed, which is what you what you call uh, DOS style. It's, it's a huge amount of set of data. But there is uh, like 5 or 10% of people who are professionally market, they can uh, work with this. They don't need any fancy or any uh, made conclusions what's going on. They really need access to raw data and a big set of raw data and they can work with this. For them, uh, we are providing um, like DOS, but DOS of more than air. It's like if, if you heard there is like a graph representing of information or some specific BI in, or business intelligence overviews, where you have huge set of data, but you can uh, let people work with it in a more in a visual way. It's still a lot, but they can uh, draw their uh, uh, conclusions and say, ah, okay, okay, okay. And they can build their own uh, templates. And basically we want to encourage them to uh, start sharing or selling uh, their data scientist results in the platform. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the final, or, or the, let's say the target 80 or 85 percent of users they are not capable or they, they, they have no no time or resources to process huge set of um, raw data so they want to see it in a more uh, digestible way and uh, for them by no means it's uh, like a dos terminal <laughs> uh, it's a more uh, um, simplified um, um, set of uh, let's say maybe even insights and provider of insights, they deal with those related data. Yeah, so two uh, basic target audience for our platform. Right. Ones who are ready and familiar with huge set of data, data scientists or uh, um, professional investors. Mm -hmm. They process it anyway, right. a big set of yep. data. And those like uh, newcomers, which are basically our uh, target market, who get served and who are paying these monthly subscriptions for accessing the data or my accessing the insights. All right. Uh, let's, let's talk now. You've, you've already done your token sale and that's, right. that's in the past. Uh, just talk a moment about that. Uh, you want to know an experience or you know to know, uh, no, uh, uh, so you sold, you sold the, uh, the sand tokens, um, and you, you finished, you collected your, um, what, $12 million. Is that, is that right? Correct. So, 
you've got uh, funding, then the, the the token sale is already done, and those tokens are out there, and uh, and then you basically those tokens are going to be used inside the system, inside the uh, the sentiment, um, whatever protocol or platform. Mm-hmm. And there are a few different ways in which people are going to be able to use those tokens in order to uh, gain access to these feeds. Mm-hmm. And basically, uh, starting out with you, you talk about staking SAN in order to give like a test run. So like right. you, a user can stake so much uh, SAN and then just talk about that for a moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, on one side, we want to give easy access for newcomers where we have uh, some subscription sets just for normal dollars uh, or Swiss francs because we're based in Switzerland. On the other side, of course, we are like uh, for crypto, we are more interested in introducing and attracting people to use crypto. Uh, For this, and also to allow people, as you say, to test the platform, you only uh, acquire or buy some tokens, be it in crowd sale or later on the market, you stake or deposit them for some period of time, like months, two or three, and during this time you use a a set of data based on your stake as you wish, and if you're satisfied or not, uh, at the end you just take your deposit, and if you didn't like, you sell tokens on the market again. So it's a so it's basically a, 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 you, you know, you you give a user an easy way to test out the right. platform right. while still, it's not like they're just walking in and taking it all. They right. have to have some sand, and then they have to stake it. But then if they don't like it, they can sell it. Right. Exactly. Now, if they do like it, then they can subscribe to the feeds, and this is where they're actually going to be paying a periodic fee in order to get a certain uh, feed or set of feeds. Correct. Um, and then beyond that, mm-hmm. you're also looking at auctioning off the, the more premium feeds. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, what you call the more premium, it's mostly by the nature of the data which is auctioned. It can only be uh, available if it's set to limited amount of people. Right. Like crowd sentiment, it's only working if, I don't know, 100 or 200 or 300 people seen it. If more people seen it, it's not crowd sentiment anymore or analysis based on crowd sentiment. And by the way, right. it's by, by itself, it's a super interesting topic uh, if we uh, deviate towards um, wisdom of the crowd or platform who are working in this area because uh, there are some assumptions which I believe only work under specific conditions, wisdom of the crowd with financials. And it's one of them we are building a platform. I know from, uh, well, I know from, from all my experience, it is possible to get insight in the crypto market based of a crowd sentiment. It is even possible to collect a set of specific insight with wisdom of the crowd. But how you use it, or what conclusions you build on top of it, it can only be sold to a limited amount of people. Otherwise, uh, if you see the bad things happening, you don't feel anymore in the way how you would feel if you did not see it, something like this. So <laughs> that's why this premium data sets, this mostly we must limit it. So in right. order to keep its value, in order to uh, also to reward people who participate in generating its value. Mm-hmm. That's uh, yeah. the most, uh, possibly the most interesting uh, business part of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. But we're coming. Soon. And then uh, the, the last part is the free side of things. You are also looking to offer a due diligence platform for people to... Uh, to make sure that they have the right information and, and just sort of the, the basic safety functions. Isn't that correct? Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's uh, um, mm. Obviously, it's you're going to get far more information probably by staking or subscribing, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, there, there, are, there is definitely a place out there for uh, just having, you know, like we had the ICO recently where the, uh, the WordPress site Yes. was uh, hacked and the address, the contract address yes. was changed out. Yes, yes. So mm-hmm. like things like that. Um, and the problem, and, you know, the, the, the not the funny part or perhaps the sad part is that they were, there were still uh, contributions being made to that address hours, even a day after the announcement was put out that this, this fraudulent activity happened. And it just doesn't seem like the, some of these users are, are doing any due diligence at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a your this is exactly uh, the problem, and you pinpointed to the uh, 
current pain point mm, a lot a lot of people do not do in the due diligence they're kind of spoiled with easy rewards we've been enjoying the first half of the year it was a natural thing if you participate in a crowd sale which is legit which is not scam and which is uh, has some marketing power behind it nicely designed web page or a set of people who are promoting project it was a given you will get two to three time return after crowd sale is over and a token hits the market and it happened over and over again so what happens to the human nature if you say what's well, the easy money so why yeah. should I pay it so much and it's actually also balanced because uh, high returns is also always connected to high risks uh, but yeah humans do not normally pay so much attention to high risk or majority of people they try to enjoy high returns and now we see this uh, exactly in this case and some other cases like uh, smart contracts where mm, or multi-stick contracts multi-stick wallets yeah. were not properly uh, tested yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. so 30 million gun like we see the risk side yeah like before we had yeah. constantly hacks on exchanges or i don't know people run away with money now we're more or less fine with this now we have, uh, because of smart contact by itself is complicated nature, and they're running a crowd sale on a proper designed um, security level. Uh, I can tell you how much effort we spent to make it secure. It's not for everyone. It has to be done in a specific and a proper way. Now, if you don't do it, uh, you take risk on you, but you also spread the risk between your participants. And now this happened in one case, and it actually it keeps happening. I, I I heard another project lost, I don't know, some million tokens too. It's like yeah. happening over and over again. Yeah. Well, it's it's it seems that some of these, you know, I've I've been covering I've been covering crypto for about four and a half years now on Neocash Radio. Oh, and the the uh, yeah, so I've I've got a pretty good perspective on things. Mm -hmm. Um. And and so the when the the ICO the token sale started up, initially when they started up the DAO was of course the one of the first one the very first one well I mean was it was Ethereum way back before that right um, and then but prior to that it was always different chains it was always a blockchain that came out so you 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 yes. basically took part in in the genesis mining right. and 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 then mining alone was so complicated that yeah. if if you weren't savvy, you weren't going to mine those first blocks because you never got your miner running. Yes. So, like, I've run miners. I've got my miner right now. I actually shut it down because it's just not as profitable mm -hmm. as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, so, like, now that the token sales are coming out, initially they, they seem to be more refined. They seem to be more well put together. And then we're getting a slew of what seem to be hasty sales. Like, they just need funding really bad, and, and they have no more money left. I don't know what their reasoning is. Hmm. But now we're getting a lot more sloppy token sales hitting the market. Exactly. Is that what you're seeing? Yes, this is exactly how it is. You're completely right. In the beginning, only savvy or nerdy, or regardless how you describe people, could participate. You, The uh, entry barrier were high, technical entry barrier. Right. And now it's not high anymore. It's an uh, advantage or disadvantage of Ethereum. Basically, anyone with average knowledge can create a smart code. But you need high, still, you still need high level of knowledge to make it in a secure way. Even the smart contract itself, they are standardized, but you can make a lot of mistakes there. And uh, we will, we saw a few of them. I am sure we will see even more. Uh, it's, yeah. it's so easy to scrub things and uh, uh, run in ICO. And uh, yeah, to balance, or like let's say, like 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 a sharks in the water, there are enough people with I don't know with specific set of uh, moral conduct who are just also exploiting and they hacking them one after another. And yeah, uh, so if it is a question, how can we improve it? Uh, you started uh, our um, this last part of talk with this. Um, can we provide or are we going to provide some security audits or security uh, uh, based um, estimation of projects on our platform? Maybe, but still it's a, it's a completely different domain. Well, we need a kind of set of uh, security experts uh, who are just checking one after another all the projects. Well, we know these right. people because we attracted them and we 
or we engage them in uh, auditing our own crowd cell. I think generally we involve like three, three independent uh, auditor for us on every specific uh, domains. And uh, because we know each other, yes, yeah, there are other people in, in the space, but to make service based on it, wow, it's uh, actually deserve to be separate, completely separate uh, uh, business uh, structure. And I believe it could be even profitable. Um, it stayed on our okay. roadmap, however, not as a, like the most immediate goal. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's definitely there's definitely space for it in in the crypto markets because there's a, there's so many nuances to what's going on, and because everything's code based. Yeah. You know, one little hitch with the ERC twenty token, and you're looking at affecting uh, numerous different projects. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so. It's 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 very much you know, we 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 joke around here with uh, some of the the neocash crew. You never know if a coin's going but belly up tomorrow. So I mean, every one of these things could be it has the potential. No, mine it could be a very small potential, but it has the potential to simply experience some some tragic problems due to some code, some bug, some glitch. You know, some like wallet problem. So right. Um, Let's let's get let's get back into the yes. sentiment and, and uh, nuts and bolts of it. And now let's talk about the data feeds themselves. So this right. this is uh, some really large. But given the number of projects and number of different um, the new ones created every day, where, how are these feeds going to be created? Is this something you and a group of people are going to be doing at uh, the sentiment headquarters, or is this something dispersed around the world? What's the uh, how is this feed going to be? dealt with uh two uh, sources for data feeds are one is fully automatic research and uh, extraction data of the blockchain okay it's by itself done properly and visualized and packaged it's a separate data feed what's going on with the project after it's launched and the second with engagement of community uh, what we are designing now uh, to have a set of curators who are like uh, tightly following one, two, up to five projects, or in general okay. some segment of project because they're interested in it. Right. Uh, and uh, based on what they're following in these projects or in these segments, uh, this separate data feed can be extracted. Uh, they provide us with additional data sources where we need to look up and which we need to connect to our system. And they provide us with all updates, uh, and at least during the initial phase, like one or two years, uh, so that we'll build up uh, a perfect data set for every single project. And uh, this communication between machine and humans is what in metrics they try to achieve <laughs> in a specific way. <laughs> now, we... Yeah, by the way, interesting. I just recall that um, Anchias, they rebranded themselves to NEO, which is basically the matrix related. Now I'm thinking, yeah, we're doing the same stuff. And uh, this connection of humans and machines to bring them uh, uh, in, in their cooperation to uh, add more and more data feeds, this is our approach. Mm-hmm. Because for, for the moment, we know what we need, but I also I know that there is many things which I don't know. And... Uh, Involving the big community, I don't know, 50, 100 curators, exactly is a way to unlock this unknown unknowns for us. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Bloomberg has over 19,000 people working yeah. to create that terminal right now. And obviously there are there are hundreds of thousands. Well, I don't know hundreds of thousands, but thousands of uh, companies. And most people only pay attention to like the top you know, billion dollar companies and whatnot, but there are a lot of, of small companies to be, you know, tracked as well. Now, one thing they have going for them is that a lot of these companies are following the regulations of their local uh, geopolitical region mm-hmm. and they have reporting. They have, they have to put reports. They have to send in this information. They have to send in uh, information to their shareholders. You know right. what I'm saying? Like you don't really have this with the crypto space. Not so, yet. Not yet, right? Um, is there is there a way? Are you going to try to incentivize yes. this? Yes. Are you going to try? Okay, okay. And, uh, it's it remains to be it remains to be seen how exactly we incentivize it. 
I personally like the approach when you uh, motivate people by your own example. And if you refer to our web page, you will see something what we are doing already for ourselves. It's a uh, transparency page where we, I think, since already pre sale back in February, publishing regularly uh, our remaining cash, our burn rate, and now with the crowd sale, even more. Uh, what are the plain transactions? So what is the purpose for to spend the money? This is exactly what you are talking about. It's a regular update for uh, your token holders. What are you doing? What what's happening? And we will extend it to, to the uh, to the way that uh, me as a founder, uh, uh, this is a set of tokens I have. You don't need to look around and asking people around. What is he doing with this token? You go to our page and you see it. This is uh, uh, my address, this is my tokens, holdings, and whatever I do, you can find it there. And I know quite few other projects who are thinking the same way. This is a blockchain and implementation of transparency is the first and maybe even more important uh, thing that decentralization. And uh, we can build a kind of a small movement in a community to encourage it and uh, just to connect the most uh, visible and I think res respected uh, projects to do the same, publish our data and uh, find a structure how we regularly update it. We can even do it on blockchain to have a hash and to prove that this is the data we publish. And then the others will have to follow because if you do not follow it, uh, the only reason you have something to hide and you do some shady stuff. Right. It, it, the, the border or what exactly has to be published, of course, we will have to find out because there are some business uh, opportunities you maybe don't want to publish, but some basic stuff like shareholders, you say. Uh, for instance, Vitalik, Vitalik always, uh, whenever someone asks, he said, yeah, everyone actually knows his address. Yeah? So yeah. Why not? Every founder, it has to be done in this way. This is my address, this is my token. So just uh, keep track on it. And if you want to know for every project, well, you go to Sunbase and you find it out. Right. And uh, yeah. yeah, this is uh, um, engagement or motivation by example. And uh, then when it becomes visible, others will have to follow. I hope it will be enough. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I'm seeing too is another thing is that you, you've got these ICOs that happen or these token sales. And leading up to it, there's usually a lot of news and buzz and, and uh, occasionally some hype. But what I'm seeing is that after the token sale happens, there's a there's oftentimes a lull in news and activity, and then you're seeing posts on Reddit of people like I haven't heard anything from this this group in you know a month. Uh, should I dump my tokens? You know, mm -hmm. it's like there's because they 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 don't have the full business uh, suite of of communication powers. They don't have a PR team. They don't have. Mm -hmm anybody uh, writing up blog posts, really. They mm -hmm. don't have anyone mm -hmm. engaging in social media. The only thing they do is Slack. And I, 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 I'm sorry, but Slack is just not enough. Uh, you need to get outside Slack in order to really reach a greater number of people. Actually, now you gave me a business idea, yeah, indeed. I mean, <laughs> you gave me an, uh, you gave me a weapon how to uh, yeah. convince as a team, not convince, to tell him, hey, guys, uh, we are just doing PR for you, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, that's yeah. that's people are sitting there desperately, and they're yeah. some of these people. This is maybe their uh, their first, you know, ICO or token sale they were a part of, yep. and for them it's a special thing, right? This is my first one, and I really want to see what happens with it. But mm -hmm. then, without the follow through, you know, they 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 become disenfranchised, and maybe uh, and and maybe it's not justified. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing, what I'm seeing, is a lack of patience throughout the market. I understand crypto moves very fast. I understand it moves four to eight times as fast as the traditional market. Mm -hmm. But um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have patience. You know, you, you still need to, to wait things out and just let's let's see where the chips lie. Yeah, uh, yeah because yeah, yeah. some of these things are so new. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, I believe the best strategy, and it's it's been proved over the few years, you uh, participate. I don't use the word investing. You see. After this, right, I think gambling. <laughs> yeah, after the second announcement, I need to use to participate in a project which you truly believe uh, and you understand more or less what they're doing. And you think, well, that's a cool thing. And you keep it for some time. 
I did it with Ethereum, so it's like paid out, I don't know, so huge. And few, with few other projects, I did not uh, participate in many, just with few which I really think, yeah, it's a cool thing. And I, I know what they're doing and I understand why is it good. And it does take time. Like for Ethereum, you know, you, you saw what happened last last year. Wow, it was like increase to the DAO top, then a crash and so very struggling and annoying and painful, uh, uh, I don't know, swimming at the bottom. And then we have this amazing, uh, I don't know how many, 30, 30 time increase. Right. That's how the things in crypto, Bitcoin, the same story, Ethereum, the same story, or many other projects, even the waves, which were almost everyone was always making jokes in crypto. <laughs> that like, uh, uh, you know, the waves project, yeah? Oh yeah, no, I, I I think Waves is completely undervalued, but I don't give advice to buy or sell right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was long time, like uh, just on SEO level for almost half a year at least. And the, the people were joking, if you want uh, some, st- <laughs> we don't need stable coin, you just buy Waves, yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then suddenly what happened? Wow, it just jumped catapulted because they were really working hard. And I know, I know, like Sasha Ivanov, I talk a few times. And I say, yeah, they're just uh, doing their stuff slowly, slowly. They're working on a and, and a dev stack, and they took not the easiest one, so it takes time. Yeah? So you keep it. And after yeah. uh, this time, okay, again, 20, ten, I think, like how much? Ten or twenty times? I don't even know. Like, like it's uh, typically at least ten times. And uh, right. this is uh, the way how some projects are catapulted very fast, uh, like Omis Go, uh, last one, because they had already a kind of working business and they, they, they connected it to the token economy. And because of some other stuff, like Vitalik has their log on their laptop, they become visible very fast. So they keep or start growing almost after the uh, crowd sell. Others just need to work out or work through at least two, three, four months, half a year, and then they jump. Like Stratis or another example. So patience, yeah, it's uh, you good that you mentioned. They really need to patience, yes. patience and uh, uh, trust and uh, mm, yeah, like it's actually lack of speculation. You just follow what you trust or what you believe to be good. It's a very good <laughs> crypto work and yeah. really on some spiritual level too. Yeah, really punish you if you just try to have uh, some small dirty money. Well, sometimes you have luck, but then you sometimes lose a lot. A lot of stories, but really encourage and support you if you support some uh, good things happening in this space. Very interesting. Patience is a key. <laughs> so you you have an app right now in Alpha, right? Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, uh, we can not not really deprecate it, but we're designing it heavily. So whatever right. we have now, we have we publish it. It was our promise for pre-sale participants. It was kind of fun application uh, for our community. We had some fun. And uh, but however, we realized that uh, why the community who has no idea what we're doing, if they download the app, they uh, kind of uh, <laughs> surprise. Oh, what? What is this? So we say, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait for the next version because we're building more stuff inside. Then you will see how everything is connected to each other. So maybe in two months, uh, if you want to uh, promote it on your <laughs> radio show, please say to wait a few months when the next version for those who are not. Uh, uh, part of our community know what we are doing, they will be able to enjoy it. Right now, enjoyment will be limited. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And yeah, we have it. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's sort of the short-term uh, goals of development right now. Is you're working on getting that next version of app out, and then I imagine you're working on building uh, the data feeds and stuff like that. Is that correct? About yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right now, we're about to. Uh, launch a very very small set of data for the project um, well if we would talk one week later maybe i would announce it always and give a link but we're like uh, making final test and uh, polishment here and there so no worries yeah yeah, yeah unfortunately yeah. all the time in my interviews <laughs> it's always like people want to tell me something but they can't because of this that or the other thing so yeah no worries mm-hmm. well i i'm uh uh i, I did i'm gonna get some some sand and i'm gonna try out this uh I'm going to try it out. Um, I do trading too on the side and all that, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm, I'm confronted with the same issue is that I'm, I'm looking at, you know, a bunch of different websites and tabbing through them and um, you know, cause I don't want to get my information from one location. I want to make sure that I back it, you know, confirm it on the blockchain sort of thing. Right. So mm-hmm. um, what, what exactly are you looking for? If I'm, if I may ask. I well, that's the thing. See, I'm more of a long. I'm more of a strategic. 
Um, I'm not someone who just tries to flip things every day, but I'm yeah. like, honestly, right now, the, the sector that is really is the go-to one for me is the debit card sector. Correct. I yeah. think that that is going to be the most onboarding and most direct to profit. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. and, and we're already seeing with 10X. I mean, we're seeing videos of people using their 10X cards at McDonald's and that's what we need to see. We need to see more of that. Yeah. And we need to see people using their crypto to buy everyday things. And then other people were like, oh, I guess I can do that now. And then mm -hmm. next thing mm -hmm. you know, you've got another half a million users and wallets open. So yep. um, that's that's really the big one for me. Um, there's a couple other minor ones, but um, I'm really looking at the blockchains too, like NXT and mm -hmm. the Ardor coming out, the Ardor chain, the Ignis chain. I think the, the child chains have tremendous usage on the mobile environments given their their relatively small footprint of data uh, storage uh, and okay. also then you can all you can run them you can run the, the blockchain node on a raspberry pi so your, your phone is not going to be using up a lot of battery power mm -hmm. um, so i'm looking at what what works with mobile and what uh, is actually let's like, like cut through the crap. What's actually going to be something people use? Like those are the the fundamentals that I'm looking at. But then again, there's a couple really interesting projects. Like we did, I did an interview with Bancor uh, recently, and their their smart token is really fascinating. I'm really excited to see this happen. I'm just sort of waiting to see how people make use of it, how it mm -hmm. pans out. Is it, you know something people actually trade? Are they going to make token changers out of it? So yeah, for me, it's sort of it's it's like I'm I'm watching the market and a lot of it is just well I've got to wait I don't have enough data I just it's just not time yet it's still in the oven. Mm. And when you look for 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 the set of data or set of insights you're incorporating in your decisions, where do you look them for? Uh, well, I, I I mean I honestly I try to look at the uh, the website the blog posts um, and I'm fortunate in that I can talk to some of these people mm -hmm. like I've interviewed Dr. Julian Hosp so I'm gonna have him on the show again for a follow up but you know I also have email and I can you know occasionally send a thing to this CEO or that not everyone has the kind of connections that I have yeah okay so yeah. But, mm -hmm. You know, so like that's sort of the way it is for me. Plus, a lot of it, too, is, as you mentioned, that gut feeling that sort of I feel good about this. I think they have good, uh, you know, the, the primary functions they need to have going are good and, and whatnot. So like it is a gut thing and there is sort of a, I believe in this. I yeah. believe this could yeah. work, yeah. but I'm also going to hedge. You know, it's not like it's a, it, it, for an example. And I'm once again, I'm. I'm I try to avoid giving buy or sell information because the United States doesn't really like that. Yeah. But um, uh, but basically, like I'm going to hedge, so I'm going to buy 10x, but I'm also probably going to buy uh, Centra. Has their ICO going right now, and they have U.S. markets open, in fact, and mm -hmm. I think there's a huge opportunity there. Mm -hmm. And then token cards, so I'm going to hedge. I'm, I'm right. going right. to take the the debit card market, and I'm going to align it to a certain percentage based on what I think is mm -hmm. actually going to happen. And and adjust accordingly. That's the biggest thing is that I'm, you know, you, everyone's like hold, everyone's like hold. And I'm like, why? Why would you hold? I mean, if there's an opportunity or if there's something going on, I mean, maybe don't move at all. You don't have to think of everything in, in uh, one in zero dichotomy. Sometimes you just move 10% right. or 15%. You know what I'm saying? Like, so anyway, enough about myself. <laughs> yeah. Let's get back to that. Santiment and let's how can people find out more about uh Santiment? Where should they go to, to get a hold of you? Um, there is a good summary on our web page, uh, just on top, there is a video like uh, four minutes. Uh, what we've been discussing here, uh, in depth, that's uh, shortly squeezed and step by step introduced again the same topics we are covering. Another one on the medium, of course, we have our uh data feed where we publish uh regularly some or let's say from time to time we publish the um, insights into crypto market when we consider something important is happening and of course in a in a slack uh, it's still typical well as long as we don't have our sentiment sun base <laughs> that you uh, go or head over to slack and there is an announcement channel where all important updates are announced and of course newsletter yeah newsletter I would say up-to-date newsletter is still, amazingly, <laughs> in crypto space, the most uh, uh, related uh, source of truth if you want to stay updated on the project. 
at least yeah. at least uh, without spending too much time it's like delivered to you otherwise uh, yeah you have to be involved in community in slack mm-hmm. on reddit we, yeah. we do have our subreddit but it's not yet actively uh, updated uh, yeah basically because as we mentioned during interview the sensible data like crowd sentiment uh, i cannot do it freely so we're designed okay what is it another set of data we want to publish there and it will be mostly updates to our project yeah similar like okay. ethereum subreddit maybe started so newsletter uh slack and subreddit and medium just to read from time to time some insights okay and the website once again uh what you mean what is the name of our website yeah uh sentiment.net this a s a sentiment yep Mm-hmm. sentiment.net all right i just i usually like to get you to uh, the uh, the the guest to say their website address just for for the audio record no yeah yeah i understand so well thanks so much for joining me maxime this is an exciting and uh, bold <laughs> undertaking you've gotten going and i really look forward to seeing what happens with it oh thank you jay thank you oh, it was very nice interesting and deep <laughs> talk for me too very interesting to talk to person who so long time already in the space yeah Very. yeah yeah excellent thank uh, you so much thank you thank you much. you're listening to neo cash radio where we discuss the future of money today tune in every wednesday for more neo cash content neocashradio.com